I am so glad, dear saints of the living God, that we are all here. But I believe you are seeing what I am seeing. I believe you are noticing what I have noticed. Beside every adult, there is a what? A youth or a young child. That is a program so great. I would want to thank the pastoral staff of our church Amen. for their wonderful planning, including our children, our youth, into our church life. Amen. Because whether you like it or not, this is the future of the church. Amen. The church that does not have children and children involved in the church life it is dead by itself. And because of this, I want to introduce to you our co-preacher. I'll call up Mr. I call him Mr. Damson Chola Jr. He can stand up. This is Mr. Damson Chola Jr. He's my son. Now, if you have never seen a picture, if you have never seen a picture when I was little, at his age, I looked exactly like him. <laughs> and my mom liked to keep long hair on me. So I was just telling a story, like I'm sharing a story with my son. Guess what? He requested his mom, I want to keep long hair. I'm like, okay, you can go sit down, my son. I would like to thank everybody that has taken part in this service. Ashley, the pianist there. We had an adult over there and a youth over there. Listen to that prayer. Listen to that prayer. This church has a future. This week, children of God, hasn't been the greatest week for us as a family. We have had several challenges and uh, a loss in our family. My brother just lost his little five-year-old girl. And uh, I was away. I thank you, dear children of God, for your prayers. Continue to pray for us. It is so hard sometimes to do and go through these things. Shall we pray? Our gracious, eternal, loving, heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath you have given to us. Speak to us, dear God, in your own way and prepare our hearts for the message. And help us, dear God, to listen to you and attend to your call. May your Holy Spirit dwell in among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I want to say something to the children, something to the adults, and something to the youth. Our message for today is call to service. Call to service. I am not going to go into so much at this time, but I have some words in particular to the youth because I can see that we do have quite a number of them in here. For our little children, God bless you. Thank you for your involvement and for everything you're putting up and for everything you're doing. Hey, for the youth, I want to let you know that I was a youth one time too. Okay? And so all those that you saw standing up here were youths before. And so we know. So we understand. So we realize what you're going through. Sometimes being a youth 
can be interesting and challenging at the same time. Especially with uh, the physical, the physiological, and the mental changes that are going on in you. It can be sometimes challenging. It is at this time that some of the children begin to feel, depending on what they are going through, they begin to feel like they do not matter at all. It is at this time that some children try to create something to seclude themselves away from anything that is to give them a meaningful life. It is at this moment that some of the children begin to hurt their own appearances. And they begin to start feeling unloved. They start looking at the environment and their surrounding and think like no one is paying attention to them. They start feeling unloved and probably unliked by anybody or their peers. And so they begin to create a little fist around themselves and keep themselves closed up and not opening up to anybody. Statistics, if you go to search, you're going to find that a lot of youths have lost their lives. I do understand it is at this time as a youth when you start feeling the age of rushing into relationships. And those relationships which are going to impact very significantly your walking with God or your walking away from God. It is at this time, dear saints, that you need to realize that there is more to you than just what you think and just what you are feeling. Sometimes you'd feel confused. But what if you knew that God was calling you to service? What if you knew that God has a plan for your life. Would you think the same way? Would you act the same way? And what if you knew that God is calling you to be a leader in preaching the Advent message to all the world now? You know, it's not easy to be a leader because of many things, such as wondering if people will like you or love you as you lead them. Or you start thinking, am I handsome or beautiful enough for the ladies to be a leader? What about your education level? Are you educated enough to be a leader? In other words, what is your experience? One thing that really stands out is our age. Are you old enough to be a leader? Old, small, or middle age to be a leader? These are some of the questions that we go through as we consider choosing our leaders. My question is, does God see the way that we see? Does God see the way that man sees? When he calls you and me for his service? Let us look at some of the men that God called for his service. In 2 Kings 22 verse 1 and so on, you can find the story of Josiah. Josiah was eight years old, two years younger than I am, and he became king. 
Do you see me being president right now? <laughs> All right, so. And he did which was right in the sight of the Lord. Moses' story is also very interesting. Some could say that he was called even before he was born. Because all the way, God was with Moses. An example of why God was with Moses, I mean, he was put into a basket to go into the water and survive. Tell me if that's not the work of God. Imagine giving up your own baby to just be saved and just put your baby into God's hands. Just to make the story short, he grew up in a palace. And once he started growing up, he found himself in a strange land where he married there. And then he heard God's voice in a burning bush saying, go back to the place where you grew up. Go back to Egypt. Let us see. You know what, turn with me to Acts 7.23. Acts 7.23. It says, and when Moses was 40 years old, it came to his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Now let us see how old he was when he went to go talk to the Pharaoh. Turn with me to Exodus 7-7. Seven, seven. Exodus 7-7. Seven, seven. It says, and Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron was fourscore three years old, when they spake unto the Pharaoh. David was called at a young age to be king. But the thing I like most about David is that he fought with Goliath, the giant, when he wasn't even old enough to be in the army. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 14, 1 and 2. 1 Samuel 14, 1 and 2. It says, now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the man who bore his armor, come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is one that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And Saul tarried in the uttermost part of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree, which was in Migron. And the people which were with Saul were 600 men. Also turn with me to 1 Samuel 16, 7. In this verse, we're going to see how God sees. It says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not at his appearance, for I have refused him, or his height, or his stature. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh at the outward appearance, but God 
Look at that, the heart. Are you waiting to see that same Goliath in your life? Answering God's call. Going for his service. Please turn with me to Matthew 19.14. Matthew 19.14. It says, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus our master here is calling or rather inviting little children. So little people, are you ready to go for God's service, it's not just the big people. He can use every single one of you. Remember, he was talking to other people. And the mothers, could have been the fathers, but the mothers, or the fathers, either one, they came to Jesus and the disciples said, no, don't come, you're disturbing our master. And as we read here, it said, let the little children come to me. Let's say that the little children are different ages. And for such is the kingdom of heaven. Little children, thank you for what you do. With all the energy, you turn me out. So, seriously, I'm not kidding. I got a brother. <laughs> so, all right. I love my Jesus because he does not call us according to the world's standard. He calls us despite our education, our age, our height, or our gender, boy or girl. As weak as you are, he's still calling you because he will make you strong. You may say, I'm not a youth, and my strength is limited. But if you have a willing heart, he can make you strong. All you need is a willing heart and you'll be just like a youth. He can welcome your decision. Some will also say, if only I had so much, I didn't have so much work to do, I can probably just talk to God. But if you do have a lot of work and God knows it, God, our God, can give you the peace of mind that this world cannot give you. And some will say, I cannot see my future. But I tell you that our God is God of physical sight and spiritual sight. And one may say, one is sick. But I tell you, my God is a great physician. And to the students, a great teacher of our lives. What would you say to Jesus? Really, who can be against us? Don't worry about your age your looks, or your color. In fact, let us read our scripture reading. Romans 8.31. Romans 
It says, what should we then say to these things? If God is before us, who can be against us? If God is before us, who can be against us? And really, if God is on your side, just put your trust in him. And you will say, it is well with my soul. John chapter 15, verse 16. What does the Bible say? John chapter 15, verse 16. The Bible says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These were the words of Jesus Christ. He is addressing his disciples that I called the twelve of you, even if amongst you one is a devil. And he meant the person that you know, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him afterwards. But he said to the disciples, I called you. You did not call me. I chose you. You did not choose me. But when I chose you, I had a reason for choosing you. That you can come and bear fruit. And the fruit may remain. The great commission that the Lord had given to the twelve was to go out to the world and to make disciples. And so here you are, and here I am, disciples of Christ. And so his call to service is just as vital to you and to me, just as it was for the 12 that he chose. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. One of my favorite writers wrote these words saying principle is exacting. No man can succeed in the service of God unless his whole heart is in the work and he counts all things but close for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. No man who makes any reserve can be a disciple of Christ, but less can be his collaborator or a friend to talk to. When men appreciate the great salvation, the self-sacrifice seen in Christ's life will be seen also in theirs. It simply means when you give yourself to Christ Jesus in totality without any reservation without thinking too many things without looking back to your past life when you give yourself totally to Christ, it does not matter of your age. It doesn't matter your color. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter your origin. It doesn't matter your life. When you submit completely to him, when you hearken unto his call, 
and you give yourself completely to him everything that you do will be according to his purpose it simply means those people that are called of the Lord who submit fully to him if it means losing their lives for Christ's sake they will lose their lives and will not worry about it because they know the promise that the Lord has given to them even when you die because of me there is a crown that is set beyond the blues just for nobody but you when you submit yourself fully to the Lord you can be the one he can work with to support the Lord's work with the means the Lord has entrusted into your hands look around it is not by chance but a blessing that the Lord has given you what he has given you when you submit yourself completely to God where he leads you will not question but you will be glad to follow total submission dear adults total submission dear youth total submission little children is what the Lord is looking for and when you accept him fully he will do everything in your life because he knows you and he knows me as an individual and he will not call you as a group but he will call you specifically dear saints not only does the Lord know the hairs on our heads the number of them all the pattern that they take on one's head but he knows each particular one and its coiling pattern that it takes oh yes laboratories that deal with crime they know that the hair that is on my head and the pattern that it takes resembles to one another but the hair that is on pastor austin's head is different from mine to make matters worse even the hair that is on my identical twin right here Little Damson and Mr. Preference, it is so different. The pattern is different. And that is how they get you if you do something wrong and not mistake you for any other person. Did you know that the inroads and the holes? on your fingertips are different from mine when you go for your fingerprints those fingerprints those fingerprints will identify nobody but you and cannot be mistaken to anybody else did you know that the chemical composition of your sweat and my sweat is different what does that suggest dear children of God it simply means that you are uniquely mad God has created you specifically and individually very very unique from any other person and when he calls you to his service he calls you, you individually and specifically. 
And you know that you are very special in the eyes of the Lord. Regardless whatever any other person may think about you. You are the only one on this planet earth. The only one of the kind. Therefore, if you miss heaven, there will be no one to cover up the hole in the heart of the Lord that you are going to create. Only you can cover that. And therefore, when the Lord calls you to service, you are very special in his eyes. I do have a simple calling that the Lord is making to all of us. Oh yes, some people may look down upon you. Oh yes, you may consider yourself to be like, you don't mean anything. You don't have the stature. You don't have the beauty. You don't have the education. You don't have the ability it takes to do God's work. Yes. You may be the person the family will not call to that important family meeting simply because you don't have a good job or you don't have the money or you just don't matter. And what you say doesn't mean a thing. You may be feeling that way. You may be reduced that way. Oh yes. You may be the one that works so hard at the place of work. You know your job very well. But probably you don't have the education they are looking for. But you have the expertise, the expertise that has educated you for what you do. Right now, several universities, they are incorporating of changing and adopting experiential learning into vital real credits. Because they are realizing that people have learned so much out of their experience than what is even put in the box. Now you are the kind of person who has learned and who has done so much but still cannot get that promotion. Somebody, your junior, will come in and become promoted and you are just at the same position. Simply because somebody in the setup, in management, thinks you are not worthy being in a higher position. It may be that you are the child who even your parents know you cannot do this. Little children, you may be the little child in your home who your father and your mother know you cannot sing. You may be the child, even the church knows you cannot stand up here and preach. You may be a child who everybody knows you cannot do anything. Little children, I want to tell you. And our youth, I want to tell you. That God sees differently from humans. Amen. When he comes to call you, he will call you individually. And he will call you specifically. Because he does not see like humans see. Therefore, I'll echo what Damson had quoted, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 17. This was a time when uh, Samuel was mourning for Saul for many, many days. And the Lord said, I have rejected Saul to be king of Israel. Why are you mourning for him? Get up and go to Bethlehem. Go to the house of Jesse, and I'm going to choose myself a king from there. 
Samuel got up, you know the story. And he is standing up there. And all the children of Jesse are coming up. Here comes the first one. Very good in stature. Very handsome in looking. Very abled man. And Samuel, the Bible says, he said, here comes the king. Verse 7 says, And God told Samuel, Do not look at his what? His appearance. Because I have rejected him. Do not look at his height. Do not look at his countenance. I have rejected him. He is not my chosen one. To cut the long story short, seven of the children of Jesse passed by. But the Lord did not choose anybody but David. The littlest that was not even present, he was brought over. And the Lord said, here is my king. Anoint him with oil. And David was anointed. Let me tell you, my dear saints, in the eyes of Jesse, David was only a shepherd boy. But in the eyes of God, David was the next king of Israel. In the eyes of Jesse, David was just a little boy that had no energy. But in the eyes of God, David was a warrior who would fight and slay Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. Yes, in the eyes of Jesse, David was just a little boy who would not stand and act well under pressure. But in the eyes of God, David was full of spirit and sound judgment who would not even under pressure put hands on the Lord's anointed, even if he had the chance to kill Saul, his pursuer. Dear children of God, God does not see as man sees. The whole year is declared a year of evangelism. And this Sabbath is a Sabbath of mentorship. Helping the little children and our youth to get fully involved into God's work. Preparing the soldiers for the cross and you and me to join hands to impact the community we live in. And this morning, the Lord has walked into his church looking for his co-laborers with him. And when he is calling, are you going to raise up your hand to say, here I am, Lord. Because you don't mind about my age. Because you don't mind about my past. Because you don't mind about what people will say. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen. Is that going to be your answer today? Let's get to the bulletin and look at our meditation quotation. These words are to the youth, but they are applicable to all of us. My suggest to young people, page 102, paragraph 2. If your steps are ordered by the Lord, dear youth, you must not expect that your path will always be one of outward peace and prosperity. The path that leads to eternal day is not the easiest to travel. And at times it will seem dark and thorny. But you have the assurance that God's everlasting arms encircle you to protect you from the evil. He wants you to exercise earnest faith in him and learn to trust him in the shadow as well 
as in the sunshine. Dear children of God, the Lord just wants you and nobody else to work together with him. You know what? If he wanted, he could have written salvation in the sky. If he wanted, he could have written salvation on the grass blades. If he wanted, he could have written salvation on the leaves out there. And the world could have read and could have been served. But guess what? Always, God wants to be in partnership with his people whom he has created. And it is for this reason that he left heaven and come on this earth to look for you and to look for me. When he calls you to service, are you going to say yes? Here I am. Send me Lord. There may be challenges. But Romans 8.31 What can we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? God bless you.